the XS Max, this one right here. Yeah. But I'm so sour on Apple because of what they did with the batteries. Yeah. That was such a dirty thing to me because everybody had always suspected, like my friend Brian was always like, dude, I'm telling you, when the new phones come out, your old phone starts moving slower. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's a conspiracy. That's all horseshit. Yeah. I'm like, your phone's just old, bro. But then when I found out that it was real, mm -hmm. I was like, you assholes. And <laughs> to pretend. The problem, the problem was the way they didn't tell people. Like, they could have just avoided, like, the whole, whatever, like, PR, we want whatever you want to call it, by just telling people, look, this is what we do when your phone's getting older. We need to preserve either the CPU or the battery. So we need to either voltage down the CPU or save your battery. Pick one and give us a choice. They didn't tell us until people started suspecting things and they had to make a statement. And then it looked kind of dirty and like hidden. It and that, I don't buy it. Yeah. I think it's a trick to try to get you to buy new phones. I don't. It, There's no way they didn't think about that. Yeah, of course There's they no thought chance about they didn't it. Think about that. Yeah. Why else would they do it that way? Why, would, why else wouldn't they just let the battery be slower or they, let the, the, the CPU be slower? And the best part is they give you the choice now, but if you never look for it, you'll never find it. And they definitely still default to saving your battery by underclocking a chip. So your phone will still slow down if you don't know where to find that option in the settings. As soon as the new phones come out. Basically. You motherfucker. <laughs> it's just dirty. It seems pretty dirty, yeah. Because it's the thing that everybody always suspected. Always, everybody always suspected there was some sort of uh, engineered obsolescence. And they're, they're doing this on purpose to get you to keep buying the newest, latest, and greatest. But I wanted to like go, nah, Apple? Come yeah. on. Apple wouldn't do that. I mean, They're your friends. They paint this picture that's really up, upright. Like, we want you to have the best experience yeah. as long as possible. Sure. Which involves not replacing your battery, which means we'll just slow down your phone just a little bit yeah. so that it's it, it lasts longer and the battery can keep up. Makes sense on paper, but on yeah. paper, well, it's, there's a lot of things about Apple that I really like. I really love the the OS. I li really love it. I mean, yeah. it's it's just so much better than Windows. But their keyboard sucks so bad on their <laughs> laptop. It's yeah. just all the laptop. Yeah, clicky. It just doesn't it doesn't feel good. There's, it's got shallow travel. There's all these issues with. I switched to a Lenovo. I went with a ThinkPad okay. just for for stand up. I have to write a lot, mm -hmm. and I found out that I write way slower, like maybe ten words per minute slower. Huh. Like it's it's a real issue because it's like it, you make a lot more mistakes with those little shallow clicky things. Yeah. And with the Lenovo, you have a, a much you have much more travel. It's much easier to touch type. It just feels better for me. But that bums me out. It's like why can't they get that right? Like you you're making these things for creative people, right? That's your whole thing. It's like yeah. think different, you know? That's another thing I kind of got like it, it's again like what Apple tries to portray themselves as versus what you're actually experiencing. If you never listen to Apple and you get the new laptop, you're like, "Wow, this keyboard's worse." Yeah. This sucks. Why is this keyboard so shallow and mushy? Yeah. Uh, and then you're supposed to listen to Apple, and they're like, well, look, we made it quieter. We made it thinner. So the laptop's thinner now. Uh, and they'll, they'll give you all these reasons why they did what they did, and they're, you're supposed to go, oh, okay, yeah, that actually makes sense. Maybe this is better. But your experience often says the opposite, so that's why people like to not listen to what Apple says and just evaluate it without listening to that. Which Particularly for writers. For yeah. someone who writes uh, and you write on a regular basis, you want a comfortable keyboard. And you know, I've I've constantly searched for the best keyboard. And right now, I think it's probably the ThinkPad. But I've heard great things about the Razer, the Razer Pro, mm -hmm. which is the really large gaming one. It has a mechanical keyboard for the first time ever on a laptop. Yeah, and that's supposed to be really good. I have tried the Blade, and I've tried what I'm using right now is the Surface, the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2, and that's got a pretty good keyboard. Yeah, it travels a lot. It's backlit, and then the actual laptop part itself is not metal. It's got like Alcantara, like you might see inside a car, like a soft touch on the laptop. I have really? it in my backpack. Yeah. So oh, it's pull that like, out. Go grab that. I'll Let go grab that. that. It's kind of Alcantara. Yeah. Like fake suede. Yeah. Like what you see in the yeah. car. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. Alcantara. Yeah, um, the Razer, pull up uh, that Razer Blade Pro, too, if you get a chance. We'll look at the Surface first because he's going to go grab that. But the Razer Blade Pro, it's also, it's a, an enormous laptop, and it has the, yeah, that's it right there. The Razer Blade Pro is so big and wide that it actually has the mouse on the side like a trackpad. This is it, huh? So that's the Surface Laptop 2.
Oh, wow. How weird. And the keyboard's pretty good. It's like a polished Alcantara. Ooh, that feels good. Yeah. The question, good. though, whenever you see that material is like, if I'm putting my palms on that all the time, how long will that last? Will it start to, like, thin out and look kind of worn after a while? Or will it stay looking like that? I hope mm-hmm. it does. And also the whole laptop is matte black, which is, I think that looks dope. But that's also usually a fingerprint magnet. When mm-hmm. you carry around, like, a matte black thing, you get, like, all this this grease on it or whatever mm-hmm. you're carrying it. So, like, that's a challenge for that laptop. But I love it. Well, the other thing about the difference between the keyboard on this versus the keyboard on uh, what I have is I have the uh, Lenovo Carbon X1. Mm -hmm. And what I really like about this is that there's they're not flat. They have like a little bit of a like a dip to them. So your fingers sort of sit in them a little bit. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a. Yeah, that's smart. I wish more, so like you kind of, it's easier, to, oh yeah, it's easier to touch yeah, type when you have exactly. like the spot, yeah. Why don't people figure that out? I think all of it is just you get used to it. Like there is a there is a Google tablet that came out recently with a $200 keyboard accessory that has circular keys and slightly concave, but like typing on it was fine. And like they claim like, oh yeah, once you get used to it, like the surface area of the key being circular makes it easier to type faster after a while. I don't know if I buy that yet, but maybe if you were a secretary and you're really you're really used to the circular. Yeah. It looks like a typewriter when you just look at it. Hmm. Which yeah. one is it? Pull, pull that thing up. Let's that would be that the one. Google. Oh, what do they call it? Something tab. It came out like the same time the Pixel Three, and their naming is weird with them. But it has a yeah, basically a a surface like like two hundred dollar keyboard magnet accessory. You can prop it up at any angle, and it goes from a tablet to a laptop with this keyboard dock. Huh. And then it's uh, it's kind of interesting. But the circular keys I found weird. That Alcantara on the hand rest feels amazing. Yeah. That's really it. nice. Yeah. I think I can get used to that. I, I, I've been using a MacBook Pro for so long, like, I the contrast is, like, I, I was really used to, like, having metal, and, like, metal feels premium and good. So, mm-hmm. like, it's not going to wear down. Um, but I, I like this a lot. Actually. Well, what metal doesn't feel good though is on your hands when you're sitting on it for a long time. If you're the writing, edges. For, yeah, the edges. Yeah, yeah they kind of got the edges annoying. right, where like they wrap the the material around to the sides. Yeah, the MacBook Pro is literally sharp. Yeah, like it cuts you, you kind of. If you put your hands on the edge for too long. This Lenovo sharp. is carbon fiber. Nice. So this whole thing is. Uh, it's not cheap though. No, it's not cheap. Yeah. It's, it's, in comparison to uh, a Mac laptop, though, it's True. it is. And there's way more options. That's the other thing. With a Mac, you get like a 13-inch, you get a 15-inch, you get a touch bar, or you get nothing. Yeah. What's the matter, Jamie? Pixel Slate. I just had it there. The picture changed. Oh, these motherfuckers. Uh, That's what it's called, though. Pixel Slate. There it is. Oh, there <laughs> it is. My favorite name. Okay. So those are the keys. Huh. Those are your circular keys. And that sort of connects to the tablet. It's a great accessory. Like the the magnet on the back, like I don't know if you've seen a Surface, the mm-hmm. tablet with the little yeah. kickstand, you kind of have like a couple notches where you can adjust it. And I think the new version has infinite adjustment, but this is the same thing. Like there's a magnet in the back of the surface or the the pixel slate that lets you adjust the tablet to any angle, watch videos, type. Whatever. Apple's the only company that makes keyboards that I know that had it better in like 2012 than they do in 2018. If you get a 2012 MacBook, you go, ooh, this is kind of better. There's more travel. <laughs> yeah. You might think it's like a, an upgrade if they went backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I agree. Goofy. What <laughs> I the fuck? Agree. I don't know how they did that. Yeah. They're so design oriented. I mean, everything looks stellar. That's what it is. Apple has been uh, not a victim of their own desire to make great design, but they often, very often, make compromises, sometimes to the detriment of how good a product can be to make it look better. Mm. Classic example was the Mac Pro, the little circular trash can looking Mac Pro that came out in yeah. 2012 or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, they kept they made all these promises. It's this sleek, modern workstation. It's going to have the Xeon chips and big GPUs. And I loved it, uh, but it only had one fan for a six $7,000 workstation, and they constantly overheated and would throttle, and eventually it was a nightmare for them. Wasn't that something that was going on with the latest laptops, with the latest MacBook Pros? Oh, yeah, yeah. Same they, thing. Yeah. Same thing. They made the, the i9, the Core i9, they put in this super thin laptop. They made this laptop so thin, and they kept the fan speed so low because it's got to be quiet. It's 
so they they just throttled the CPU down so it wouldn't get so hot that they had to kick up the fans that high. So the actual performance, even though the CPU is more powerful, was not as good as the last model. Right. That's Which was fucking to stupid. make it look good. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, Apple's been a victim of their own like desire to make things so beautiful. And then they got fucked by Huawei because Huawei came along with the MateBook. Mm. And the MateBook Pro is really a better version of the MacBook. I'm into it, yeah. They so, fucking nailed it. There's no bezels. The way that webcam pops up from the, the that button. That I found interesting. I don't know how. It's, it's a weird like, angle. It's like up your nostrils. Exactly. It's like on the table level of wherever you're sitting, kind yeah. of looking up at you. That's very odd. But yeah, there's there's a lot of great things about that. But Pull I think, that thing up. MateBook Pro, Huawei. But meanwhile, it's probably spying on you all day long. <laughs> yeah. Sending information to the Chinese government. <laughs> yeah. Huawei's reputation is not so hot. Um, they just found some spy chip in their cell phones. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, well, there's a couple things that just happened with, with chips in hardware. There's another thing about a uh, Bloomberg report. Did you see that? Yes. Of uh, the chips that came from all these, this, this server company, or this company that makes the chips that sells to all these big companies like Apple and, and major, major companies, and now everyone's compromised. And Apple's yeah. like, nope, not true. Definitely not true. Don't say of that. Of course, not us. Yeah, no, 100% not us. <laughs> but, like, yeah, that's that's a really weird story. Put, look at this MateBook. Look, the bezels, they're almost non-existent. That so your is challenge, a gorgeous website. If you're, if or a you're, gorgeous laptop, rather. If you're Huawei and you make that, now you have to convince people to switch from the MacBooks that they love to that. Yes. Just on looks alone, they could probably do it. Mm -hmm. But then there's all the other features like, well, it doesn't run Mac OS X. Do I have iMessage? Right. Do I have no. all these other things that I like about my Mac? This huge touchpad. Right. Um, well, it does have a huge touchpad. Yes, but I, I'd say to this day, still, Apple has the best laptop touchpads, the multi-touch stuff. The battery life is supposed to be excellent as well, right? Yeah. How, how Look good? at that, that chart. That, was, that chart was perfect because that's like all these X's for that. Yes, we have great design. We have better ports. Mm. You only have USB-C on that little MacBook Pro. We mm. have full-size USB. We have all this stuff. We'll give audio to the MacBook Pro. It's got bigger speakers, whatever. But we have a better battery life. We have all this better lower price, all this stuff. And you still have to reconcile with what people love about their MacBook Pros, which yeah. is Mac OS X. Well, there's that, but there's also people love having an Apple product. That too. They do love that. Yeah. They love, like if someone... If like, you could put an Apple logo on a Huawei, I wonder how many <laughs> they could sell. It'd probably be a little better. Sell the shit out of them. Yeah. Well, you know, some comic has a joke about texting a girl and the text message comes back in green. You go, damn, she's poor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true thought people have. Yes, people yeah. want iMessage. Like if you're if you're messaging someone and you find out it won't send an iMessage, it'll only send a text message. You're like, oh, it's weirdo. Either they have a flip phone, it's like some weird. cave person. I've been on the other side of that. Like I carry an iPhone, but I don't. I text people on my Android phone, so I've never been on the uh, judging side. But I I wonder about that every day. Like, really, what does it matter? Like, I text you with a green bubble, which Apple decided first of all to differentiate iMessage versus text mm -hmm. message, which is hilarious. Um, what? Who cares? Like, the, what Well, the does blue it does look better. It. I'm sure they decided to. They. I'm sure in a software update, they tweaked that green to make it look extra harsh. Well, like you know, different. what it is is they figured out, they figured out with pool tables a long time ago. Like, pool tables, the cloth generally is green, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But when they started playing in professional tournaments, they realized that blue cloth is actually easier on the eyes and you can differentiate differentiate the edges better. So a lot of like really high end professional matches are played on blue cloth now. That makes it's sense. like a light blue sky blue cloth. Yeah. I've seen and that's I guess because of the way your eyes work. Yeah. Like something about primary colors and the cones and you're more contrast sensitive to blue or something like that. I don't know. Well, it's I'm something about the way the way white contrasts with green is not quite as pleasing as white contrasting with blue. Weird. But it could be that Apple's fucking with you with the green. They're giving <laughs> yeah. you some vomit green. Make it some brown color next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. The color of the app is green. Well, Why yeah. wouldn't they make it blue? I messaged the app. That button you press to open it is green. It's a green it's logo. Why not make it blue? That's really true. Yeah, oh. what the fuck? Yeah. That's a very good point, Jamie. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did they do that? It's still. Know. Why would it be green when you're sending blue messages, Apple? That's weird. He <laughs> dorks. Steve Jobs is dead. You guys are fucked. You don't know what you're doing. Design. Um, but the, the MateBook, other than that, 
it's supposed to have a better keyboard. It's supposed to have a keyboard that's probably similar to that Surface Book. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to have better battery life. Bezel-less. Right? Yeah, bezel-less. Touchscreen. Touchscreen. Higher resolution. But you got to deal with Windows 10, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass, i got to admit. It's like the updates are almost daily. There's yeah. something going on with firmware or something going on with this or that. Or I've gotten used to it mostly, though, because most of what I do on my laptop is pretty web-based. So I'm just living in Chrome or Safari or whatever, right. so it's not a big deal. But then, yeah, once I have to go out and... I'm going to go in Lightroom and do some photo work, and then, like, suddenly I'm digging through files, and I'm in Windows, and it's then you start to yeah. feel like you're different. Yeah, when you have, first time you have to update a driver, you're like, what is it, 1996? What yeah. the fuck is going on here? I'm updating yeah. drivers? I try to Ew. avoid that. Ew. It's just, they're close, though. Like, it's way better than it was five years ago. Yeah. You know, five years ago, you would look at Windows. You'd be like, this is, like, some archaic, pixelated... Came from Vista to Windows 7 to Windows 10. Vista was kind of that nightmare, and then they kind of <coughs> have worked upwards since I started now, with Windows 95. I used to make my own computers back in my hardcore video gaming days. Nice. I used Same. to go to Fry's Electronics and get motherboards <laughs> and the yep. box and fans. and. I started that online, so I never went to a physical computer store to buy parts, but I would have to do the whole like cross-referencing cross what's compatible with what online and then put together a whole list, and then just buy it. And then nine boxes show up, and like mm. hopefully they all work. Yeah. But yeah, it was the same experience. Yeah, and SLI video cards, and connecting them with that cable, and you all that You ever mess up and break one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah fucked makes up. You, but fixing it makes you feel like you did something. Well, there's something <laughs> going on when you're like the jumpers for the motherboard, and you're moving stuff around, and it's, it, it, was, it was cool. Yeah. And then once you actually got online with a computer you made yourself, you're like, this is yeah, something about that. this. <clears throat> and I remember yeah. when you used to be able to do that with Apple. You used to be able to buy clones. Yeah. I mean, my so I, way back in the day, still in high school, I had a Dell XPS like 730, I think it was called, this huge desktop where, again, you could like take this CPU cooler out, put a new one in, it was modular fully. And then Apple also made this huge desktop, this Power Mac. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know what it was called at the time, but it was, again, massive. You could take the graphics card out, put a new one in. You could take the RAM out, take the CPU out. But it was like this this weird system where like they were on like decks and you had to like trunk, like take this big metal slot out and then do the CPU there and then put it back in. Yeah. It was really satisfying to like change the <laughs> hardware and like, yeah, I did that. And then yeah. you boot it up and it's like, that's exactly right now. It's got eight gigs of RAM. Yeah, there's some, especially, I don't know, I think it's a man thing, too. Men, like, changing carburetors. The mechanical and, feel. Yeah. Of, yeah. That's probably a lot to do with it, too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <coughs> that thing. Yeah, yeah I, I remember think that even sucker. one generation after that, because that whole, that, it had, like, basically, like, elevator levels to it. Like, the yeah. top level, and then the bottom level, and then the hard drives, and the power supply, and the top, like, all that stuff. And you could mess with that. If you go over someone's house, and they have that now, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But that's the thing about, like... That was the most accessible modular desktop Apple ever, ever made. And now they're making this promise again, like, all right, we listened. We know that little trash can Mac Pro was not good thermally or design-wise for anyone. So we're going to make a modular professional desktop Mac Pro again. That's what they said. And it's going to be next year sometime. And I keep picturing that. I picture them going back to the roots of like a, a real bona fide desktop. Because right now, the most powerful iMac or Mac you can get is the iMac Pro. And you can't even update the RAM in the iMac Pro. Really? You can't update anything about what? iMac Pro. Really? Yeah. What you buy is what you get. If you buy a $7,000 iMac Pro, you will have that spec forever. Ugh. Apple doesn't want you opening anything in that thing. So when they say, yeah, we're going to make a modular, updatable real well-designed apple desktop i'm like i really hope they're doing that like 